I think they can continue on the road they've been going, but smarten up a little bit, be a bit more ruthless. Some of the batting when they were bossing the game at 180 for one, be a bit more ruthless. You saw the way the skipper played in both innings, ruthless, played the situation. Saw Ben Duckett's innings yesterday, brilliant in both innings, and then with three overs to go, he decides to back away and nearly gets caught third man. I think they're the bits that he's talking about, that he doesn't want to over-elaborate because he doesn't want to throw any individual under the bus. You know, the Brook backing away situation. I think they are, even from Australia, and I know you've spoken about Carey or whatever, and that is ruthless. Carey standing down the leg side, switched on, sharp, streetwise, bouncer. If he's standing the other side, he doesn't take that ball down the leg side. Three balls, they notice that Johnny Bairstow is leaving the ball and walking out of his crease. Ruthless, smart, switched yeah. on, run him out. That, with what they've done, and if they can add that ruthless, smart, that's what this bloke epitomises. He's not someone that swings from the backside, Ben Stokes. He is someone that, in a World T20, in a 50-over World Cup, Headingley, and now at Lords, has played the situation. I think they've believed the hype a little bit. <laughs> they've gone away from what made them successful. And I can tell you, I've heard stuff coming out of the camp and... Press conferences are results aren't we were here to entertain and results aren't important. Results are important. It's yeah. not what we, fending off the short ball, Michael Atherton, we still talk about that spell off Alan Donald. That was entertaining because he saw off a real grind and he fought it out. That people remember for years. Entertainment is not just swinging gung ho. Today was entertaining. So I, I just want them to continue on the road they're going, and this is just a little bit of a wake-up call that don't believe the hype, remember what we've did, be a bit more ruthless, switched on, and we can get back on that track. There's a very good reason why the atmosphere is still quite electric here. We finished play, what, 45 minutes ago? Why is that? Because the fans want to beat Australia. And I think the process has to change somewhat because it is about winning. This series is about winning. This is not about the process. I honestly believe that the reason why the long room was the way the long room was, was because it's Ashes cricket. And it's about winning, and it's about making sure you make the right decisions at the right time. And I think the rough edges that Be uh, Baz was talking about there were those decisions that weren't made right. And I think that they really need to knuckle down in this next, next test match. And whatever those decisions are, whatever those key moments are that he's talked about, they just have to win them. And they've just got to be way, way smarter. That, that doesn't mean you go back to the old days and you play fearful cricket and you start pl selecting people who block it or whatever. Let's not go back to that. We are all loving what we've seen in the last 18 months. So this is not an overreaction. I go back to a conversation I had with Rob Key when he got the job. And I said... He said, oh, we need to change the brand and style of cricket. And I said, nonsense. England fans just want you to win. And he texts me going, well done, Einstein. That's brilliant punditry. How are we going to win? We've got to change the brand and style. Right? And that's exactly what they've done. But they did that to win, not to entertain. It's all about winning. I'm sorry. It is all about winning. People come back through the gate because they want to see a winning side. They'll be entertained for a while, but you go 2-0 down, They've loved what they've seen, but for me, it is about winning. And don't ever forget that. They have been winning. They've been winning for 12 months. Yeah, but... Look what went before. They, but to be, these are fairly be, small margins, aren't yeah, they? have just got to tighten up a little bit. That's where the game is. When you're at this level playing against the World Test Champions, if you drop off from 95% to 90%, they will do you. And that's what they've done. Just for 5%, they've believed the hype that we can swing from the back backside and not play the situation grind Australia down. Second innings edge bass and they had Australia like that grind them down, get a lead of 320 Australia aren't coming down. I'd be sitting in that dressing room thinking, do you know what we could be 2-0 up here and then we'd be really singing their praises so if you play smart cricket with this style, with McCullum and Stokes you've, you, will, you will get a lot of success so this actually could be just a little wake up call that this side might need to say, we're better than this Do you agree? Well, I think we've got to go back to this approach has worked fantastically well for them. It has been the reason they've won. Remember, they won one in 17 test matches before Ben Stow took over. But I think that the margins are so much smaller against Australia and the consequences are that much higher. The context is different. Last summer actually wasn't that much about winning. This is about embedding that new approach, 
having a bit of a smile on your face oh, and won. enjoying your cricket, and they won. Now the consequences are that much higher, and against this quality of, of side, you have to get everything exactly right. You can't afford those little things to go wrong. England have announced their squad for the next Test match. It's the first time that we've had a look at it. I don't know if there are any changes. Let's have a look. So Stokes, Moeen, Ali, Anderson, Bairstow, Broad, Brook, Crawley, Duckett, Wood, Wokes, Tong, Root, Robinson, Pope, Lawrence. Looks exactly the same to me, or have I missed something there? I was looking to see if Ben Folks was coming in yeah. and then made change. You know, Ollie Pope would be the interesting one with his shoulder. Um, will he be fit to play at three and field at three? So, And then the bowlers, like Kevin asked um, Ben Stokes about the bowlers. That's going to be the key. There must be some tired bodies in that dressing yep. room. Well, Rayon Ahmed has gone and Matt Potts has gone, but we do think that Moeen Ali might be able to play. He said to us the other day that his, we actually looked at his yeah, finger. He looks right. look better. Yeah, it looks a lot better. Uh, it's just how they go about what they're going to do with the seamers. I mean, mm. Jimmy Anderson has not had two good test matches. But that's the thing. And he said some very strange things in the press about pitches being kryptonite. He's yep. obviously said to Ben he doesn't think he's going to be effective on this pitch. What do you do with Jimmy Anderson? It's, it's difficult because on, remember on day one, it was overcast, it was horrible, the drizzle was around. I mean, if we thought that Jimmy Anderson was going to strike in this series after everything that he said about Birmingham, it was going to be the day one of Lords with the conditions that he had. So I think that uh, over the next couple of days we will find out, Wardy, because I think Mitchell Stark was the one who just said, yeah, now there's going to be some bowlers who turn up tomorrow really, really broken. And I think for both teams, uh, we'll find out at the toss. I think, I, I think it'd be foolish to name your team... Tuesday, I think, Tuesday, they, didn't, they named it two days before this test match. I think they've got to give the guys enough chance to recover. Uh, and if your team is good enough to win the first test match, which was a week ago, I don't see Ben Stokes or Brendan McCullum dropping people. Uh, I think they're going to keep going the same way and just ask them to just be smarter. Wood, get some pace in. Well, I, I thought Josh Tong added an extra dimension to the bowling attack in this test match. I think Wood will do exactly the same. I thought England looked flat, actually, in that first session. A little bit of a sort of emotional hangover from Edgebaston. I'd be amazed if they go in with the bo same bowling uh, attack. I, I think with Anderson, the point is it hasn't swung so far this series at all. So they have to go up to Headingley and see how much it's swinging up there, what the overhead conditions are like. But they're going to need some fresh blood in that bowling attack for me. How do you see it? I uh, probably Anderson is the key one. You know, Ben Stokes stood here and said Jimmy turned to him in this game and said, "There's nothing in it for me second time round, and there was nothing in it for him at Edge Bass." And so whether Jimmy could do four in a row, I'm not so sure. And you'd want him to play on his home ground at Old Trafford. So maybe on a flat one at Headingley, which he often is. I think Leach bowled 30 odd overs on the first innings at 20 odd on the first day four years ago on that flat one. So I do think that um, you know I do think that that. that Anderson may need to rest for Leeds. Headingley and play at Manchester. 